Chris Alfred Payton is doing a terrific job of getting them off to great starts. Um, Terrell out there, will he go tomorrow? I, right now, I would say doubtful. Right, I'd say he's doubtful. Obviously, he's been messing with his knee. Uh, you, know, the, the, you know what the problem with Darrell Arthur is? And I told him this in London. Um, he only knows one speed. Yeah, he's pushing himself. I mean, like, so when you when we had two great practices and we went hard, when we go hard, he's going the hardest. Mm -hmm. And, you know, obviously his knee has a hard time withstanding that mm -hmm. pounding. Um, so I almost have to try to protect him from himself at times. But I'd say it's uh, he's doubtful for tomorrow night. Everybody else should be available. You said in London that um, before the game, you said, what are we going to need to do this to, to succeed and beat these guys? And Gallo said, defense. Um, he kind of stepped up and, like, basically, I think that was the best defensive performance I've seen him do in a couple of years, actually. Um, how much of that was that due to the rest he was able to get, as you pointed out before? And how much was that? Was that kind of a difference in mentality on his part? Well, I would say probably a combination, Jeff. Obviously, the fact that he was able to Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, that's, uh, you know, that's a good amount of time to rest your body, rest your ankle. Uh, the other side of it is I think I have been harping on how, how bad our defense has been. And even in light of losing five in a row, here we are, we're a game out of the playoffs. Um, we can be a playoff team only if and when we decide to defend at a much higher level than we have. Um, so our offense is never an issue. The only thing that gives you an, uh, an issue there is turnovers, but um, are we going to make a concerted effort to focus uh, and have discipline on the defensive end of the floor, collectively and individually? So in Gallo's case, that means meeting the challenge of guarding Paul George head on. You know, uh, trust the help behind you, but don't rely on it. And he, he met that challenge, and obviously uh, I think Paul George is two for 12 maybe, um, and, and their starting group really struggled. Um, but I, I think I was happy to hear that we go over an in-depth game plan and pre-game video presentation. I said, you know what, all this stuff, screw it. What do we have to do to win tonight? And Gallo, right away, we got to play defense. Individually and a team, we got to play defense. If we play defense, we're a pretty good team. And he's right, and we did that for most of the game, and uh, it was good to see. How much, I mean, the fourth quarter was, you guys were up by 30 going into the fourth quarter. It kind of skewed the, uh, the perception of the numbers. Well, you guys... If it would have been, you know, a little closer, probably would have held them to about 100 points. All right. Um, what were you guys doing, uh, along with attentiveness and, and assertiveness? What were you guys doing differently that you felt during that game? Because it seemed like individually and as a group, as a group, everything was a little different, and everyone had a little more zing to it. Zing to it yeah, I would say just uh, more zing, like you said. <laughs> it was, uh, it's not like uh, what I told our team after one of the practices, you know, because uh, you know, it got sloppy at the end of one practice, and uh, you know the NBA had a mic on me, and they can't use any of the footage. To <laughs> <laughs> you know, Sorry, and I apologize, about. but yeah. you know, it was just a, a beat fest. You know, and I said, you know what, fellas, let's be honest. I said we can change the coverage, we can go from this to this, we can do this. It's not what you do, even offensively. I don't care if it's Princeton, if it's triangle. It's not what offense you run. It's how you run it. Defensively, it's not the coverage, it's how you, how you, what do you bring to the table? Do you bring that effort and energy? And to be honest with you, Jeff, I, you know, I, I think the biggest thing for me was seeing that guys went out there and we played with a great sense of urgency, almost a desperation, because we need, they had won five in a row, we had lost five in a row. You know, the hungry cat hunts best, who wants it? I thought we went out there and played with that sense of urgency and desperation that we need to. But on top of that, I thought defensively, it wasn't like, you know, we changed and there was a huge difference in the game plan. But it was, it was the fact that we went out there and, and, and executed the game plan with intensity and passion and, and, and effort. And we gave it a chance to work when you do that. If you don't do those things, you never really give your game plan a chance to work. So the guys brought that to the table. They, they took the challenge of playing against a good team who's playing good basketball. And, uh, and she had the five wins in a row. They were averaging over 120 points a game. And to your point, they're well below that going into the fourth, that pace. And then they hit a bunch of threes, I think six threes in that fourth quarter, and it kind of skews the numbers a little bit. But it's amazing what you do if you do it with a little bit more effort and energy. Hey, Paul, Coach. Following up, I'm sorry, I'm going to follow up specifically about chasing over screens with the guards because that's been an issue. Right. And in this last game, not only did they do that, I thought, a lot better, but they even picked up some fouls by being too aggressive on that. Right. Was that an improvement? Was it a one-game sample size improvement? Yeah, obviously very small sample size. And Teague, you know, his gamesmanship of <laughs> – <laughs> drawing the fouls, it was like, like, you know, come on, man, you kidding me? Um, but to your point, I mean, your defense starts on the ball. 
uh, and, and our guards and our coverages have to be into, over, and then pursue. It can't be screen, I die. Mm -hmm. And that now the gap is so far that you have no chance of getting back in front of the ball. And now you're forced to switch, big onto small, small onto big, and that's when things get skewed. Um, but yeah, just the, to your point, uh, the, the energy, the effort, the fight, I'm not getting screened. I'm gonna make this guy feel me. And I think that's what good defensive teams and good defensive players do. They make you feel them for 48 minutes. Uh, and we had that in many stretches that game. But you know, by no means is it, hey, we're it's solved, we got it. But hopefully it's a step in the right direction. And we realize that when we play like that and we get stops, I mean, we had 23 fast break points, we're 140. I mean, that's fun. When you defend and then offensively the way we've been playing, I mean, I, I can watch that all night long. That's great basketball to watch. And, um, you know, it was a great environment, obviously, in that arena. And there's a lot of uh, excitement and very neutral crowd to start. But I think, you know, the fans, the, man, look at this team, how they share the ball and move and they make the right play. And, you know, uh, there, there's a lot to be said for that. You guys are uh, part of a full slate of games tomorrow to uh, celebrate Martin Luther King Day. I just want to know what you thought about, I guess, the league kind of consciously deciding these last couple of years, like, Hey, we're going to celebrate this day. Oh, I think it's a great thing. You know, uh, I saw a quote that Pop had. You know, they played in Mexico City, uh, and one thing about the NBA, when it was David Stern and Adam Silver as commissioner, uh, they're at the forefront of all that. You know, uh, you know, uh, our league is represented by all walks of life, and to celebrate, you know, uh, and honor Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., I think is the right thing to do. Uh, most of our guys in our team and our league are African American, and there has to be. Uh, a, a real feel there, but the great thing about Dr. King is it's not just for black and white. You know, it's for you know for everybody, uh, for my two girls. Um, but so I, I think it's great that the league is at the forefront, like Pop talks about, celebrating the legacy of Dr. King and and what his message was. But it's not just that. I mean, from all walks of life, uh, and, and every color, creed, uh, religion and sexual orientation, the league is at the forefront. And I'm just proud to be a small, very small part of that. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks,